I'm Kendi and I am a current sophomore at Norfolk State University. I have also been a volunteer for Norfolk for the past seven years. Hi, I'm Amanda. Hi, I'm Emma. And we're seniors at Nansman Suffolk Academy. A habitat is the natural home of an animal, plant, or other organism. We're here along the shore of the Chuckatuck Creek at the Smith site where we have learning cubes, a natural living shoreline created by oysters in the past 30 years, and a small oyster reef extending from the shoreline. Our oyster restoration team will be setting out substrates on the 2.4 acre oyster lease just around the corner where we will begin our own Narpa Oyster Sanctuary. 400 years ago, oyster reefs were so numerous and tall that they were a navigation hazard. Oysters in the Chesapeake Bay could filter all the water in the bay in about two days. The water was much clearer and the oyster reefs were like little mountains. Oysters live in salty or brackish waters on all U.S. coasts, clustering on older shells, rocks, piers, or any hard submerged surfaces. They fuse together as they grow, forming rock-like reefs that provide a habitat for other marine animals and plants. There are many oyster reefs and oyster ground in the James River, Nansman River, and their tributaries. Some are public ground and some are privately leased ground. Students from Western Branch and local Girl Scouts started the Raising Baby Oysters in 1998. In 2010, Nansman River Preservation Alliance joined the effort. Citizens, Suffolk Public School students K-12, Nansman Suffolk Academy, and homeschoolers all participated. Spat were raised from tiny oysters to three inch size, and then placed on our tiny reef. Students visited the site to clean the floats and count the oysters. Oysters were taken to the students in the middle schools who could not take the field trip. When the water temperature reaches 72 degrees Fahrenheit, Oysters will begin to reproduce and send clouds of sperm and eggs into the water, which get together to form zygotes, which drift around and develop. Oysters begin life as tiny swimming creatures. Within two weeks, they settle down and attach to solid surfaces where they grow for the rest of their lives. These small oysters are known as spat. Once they attach or glue themselves to a surface, they cannot move. Oysters depend on food to drift by. Oysters suck in water and siphon small microscopic plants and animals that float by. Oysters then squirt out clean water and deposit oyster poop, known as pseudofeces, on the benthic and bottom layer of the river. A market-sized oyster is one that is big enough to sell and harvest commercially. It must be three inches long. We are not selling or eating our oysters. They will be working to help clean our waters. A full-grown oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day so oysters are a great filtering system for our waterways. Hundreds of animals, plants, and small organisms live on an oyster reef. Some that we see on our oyster reefs are hog chokers, sea squirts, jellyfish, mud crabs, and midhaven. Oysters do not have it easy. They cannot run from predators. Blue crabs, croaker, skates, oyster toads, and oyster drills attack the oysters. The oyster flatworm gets inside the oyster and eats the body of the oyster. River otters, herons, and raccoons all feast on the oysters when the tide is out. River otters even try to get into the tailor floats. The worst oyster predator is pollution. Oysters have worked hard for millions of years to survive. Their filtering water for food has helped to clean the waters for those million years. In the last 200 years, the reefs have changed, and oysters are just 3% of what they were in the 1600s. They are still pumping and filtering. Our oyster sanctuary reef may help. So, what did we learn today? First, oysters filter water. Oysters live in rivers and creeks. Oysters have always been a part of Suffolk, and they provide a habitat for many animals. And that's why we love oysters. Mm -hmm.